Okay, everyone, welcome to a new weekly live Q&A. Um, this time it's a holiday edition, I suppose. Uh, so I'm not really sure how many people are going to come on. Let me get this, uh, make sure this, the volume is off. I got some questions already, though. Um, one second, this volume always blasts if I don't cut the stream soon enough. Uh, for some reason, it's taking its sweet time. There we go. Cut the volume. Anyway, so welcome to a holiday edition live q and I already got people coming on. This is great to see. I didn't know how many to expect, um, considering that it's, uh, you know, it's Christmas. So um, let's kick this off. Um, first question from from Nick. Are there different benefits of or associated with different coffee bean roasts? I've seen that medium roast is the best and dark roast is the worst. I don't really know much about that, to be perfectly honest with you. I know that I, I've heard that lighter roasts and medium roasts have higher caffeine content than the darker roasts. So there's that much I, I know. But uh, what whether there's different benefits, I mean – I, I think I've heard that like with maple syrup, for instance, the darker the maple syrup, the more mineral content and uh, and whatnot. So perhaps the same kind of thing rings true with coffee as well. But I have to look more into that. I really don't know. Um, thoughts on gun control. Also, what cardio do you do for the martial arts? Um, I don't think that gun control, I don't think there should be gun control. I do think that mentally unstable people shouldn't be allowed to access weaponry. So I do agree with some background checks when it comes to uh, you know assault weapons. But I don't think that we should uh, you know otherwise control guns. People should have a right to be able to defend themselves if they need be. And the truth of the matter be told that criminals are gonna get a hold of weapons no matter how tight the rules are. Um, so we should have a right as citizens to be able to defend ourselves. And as for the martial arts, what cardio do I do for the martial arts? I don't like doing um, treadmill running or the stationary bike or anything like that. I don't do any of that. I just do martial arts for cardio. So what I'll do is like, instead of like doing a bike where I would do a bike, I'll go to the heavy bag and I'll do punch and kick intervals. Um, you know, com work on combinations. Sometimes I'll do punches, sometimes I'll do kicks, sometimes I'll do both. And I'll do that and I'll do like blasts of like 30 seconds of like punching and kicking combinations. Then t step back and take like 30 seconds rest and then blast out again and, and just repeat that for like, 15, 20 minutes. That's one way I'll do cardio. Uh, I also do, can do a little more sustained where I just hit the bag, um, you know, punches and kicks, uh, and and then rest as I need to, but I don't really consistently rest for any short any or long period of time. I just like take a few breaths and get back into it again and maintain a consistent level of output, uh, which I guess could be considered more like steady state cardio in that case, and I'll do that for like 30 minutes. Um, but typically, yeah, the hit hit style in the bag is one of my favorite forms of cardio that I personally do. Um, should soy be a staple for everyone, every vegan diet, or could there be some exceptions or replacements for soy? Some people are allergic to soy. Like, I'm allergic to wheat gluten. Some people are allergic to soy. And in the case of those allergic to soy, maybe they're not allergic to wheat, and they can, you know, use, like, seitan or something like that instead of uh, instead of tofu, for instance. Um, that's something you can consider. Or they, maybe they rely on beans instead, more heavily on black and pinto beans, things like that, instead of like soybeans particularly. So really, they're, they're like you, know, you don't have to eat soy as a vegan, but it's a great option. It's a very versatile option. It's very high in protein. Um, <clears throat> Hamry Hank is just in time. Hey, Hamry. Uh, what do you make of plant-based omnivores, people like Vegan Cheetah heavily promoting it? Uh, you mean... I guess where somebody's diet's mostly centered around plant-based foods and stuff, but they do eat um, like, uh, like I guess, dairy and eggs and whatnot. It's not a vegan diet. So I, I just want people to understand that in that instance, there's a difference. There needs to be a difference that's emphasized between somebody who is, you know, merely plant-based but still participates in omnivorous food choices as opposed to somebody who's a vegan. Otherwise, we start bastardizing labels, bastardizing definitions, and confuse the general population. Because I recently told a guy that I was vegan, um, 
and he, he asked if I had any dietary restrictions. I told a guy that I was vegan. Well, that means that means you don't eat fish, right? It's like, no, I don't eat fish. That's that, This is the problem when you bastardize things. And you got people who are vegetarian, for instance, and but they still eat fish, and it confuses people to what the definitions really mean, what these words really mean. So I, I you know, if, if vegan cheetah is indeed, now I'm not saying he is, but if he is indeed a plant-based omnivore, so to speak, where he's eating primarily, I guess, plant-based diet, but some omnivorous inclusion, then he's not a vegan, and he needs to change the title of his channel and his or his avatar name, whatever, from vegan cheetah to something else, like omnivore cheetah or whatever the fuck he wants to call himself. But putting that vegan title in there is confusing. Uh, Corey, I missed the part about the last five of your Q and A's due to studying, and, and as a punishment, I'm holding in my pistol. <laughs> Watch this one. Well, free animals. Uh, that's free animals that said this. Um, you know, I don't know how long this Q and A is going to go for. Being that it's a holiday Q and A, it could run for like you know, thirty minutes, twenty minutes, depends on how long the questions last, or it could go the normal hour length. We'll see. I mean. Um, we'll see how people get on board here and take part. I'm actually surprised. I'm actually, I mean, I actually thought that I would come on here and nobody would show up for the Christmas Q and A. So, you know, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. Um, Clyde says, should all vegans take DHA and supplements or food like flax seeds enough? Uh, I actually got the idea of reincorporating DHA from Dr. Gregor. Uh, his book, How Not to Die, explains about how you should supplement with at least 600 milligrams of DHA EPA a day from an algae source, as well as consuming ALA form omega-3s from like a flax or chia or hemp or one of those. Um, so what I do is I consume flax seeds every day and walnuts, which contain the ALA. And I also take a 600 milligram DHA vegan supplement that's uh, algae derived as well with my first meal. Um, uh, do you have any liberal or leftists in the European sense friends? Uh, I have not necessarily Europeans, but I have some leftist friends. Yes, I do. They're not extremists. Um, one of them, for instance, to give you an example of not an extremist, they were Hillary supporters, but they're accepting the fact that Trump is president without throwing a temper tantrum about it, without trying to like be undemocratic about it, you know? So I do have some leftist, um, uh, so, you know, people who are friends of mine who are leftists. Um, I can be friends with people and not necessarily, not necessarily subscribe to their political or social beliefs. Um, you know, that, that I can be friends with people and cordial with people and have, but also at the same time, intellectually disagree with them. You know, uh, this, this, you know, it's not like, for instance, what you see on, on Facebook, for instance, where you mention you support Trump. And you get like a trove of people who just unfriend you or openly insult you than unfriend you. That's immature. And it shows that a lot of the people that seem to lean toward the left, at least in the extreme left, are incredibly immature. They're like crybabies, basically. Um, I'm not saying that there aren't right, right wing examples of the same thing, but I'm just seeing such a prevalence of what seems like emotional and mental disorders in leftists, you know? And that, that kind of makes sense. I think the, uh, the American Journal of Political Science actually released a paper saying that uh, liberalism actually is a mental disorder. But, you know, this is not really a political channel. So um, although I will be doing some videos on SJWs to come, uh, I've actually been speaking with Vegan Gaines about this and Ask Yourself about this on Facebook. We've been talking a lot. And I have some things to say about it as well. So I'll be doing some videos about that and how it relates to vegans. Um, what is your opinion on Joe, on John Rose? He is a, a making a believer out of me on raw foods being more healthier than cooked foods. Plus he isn't a pseudoscientist. I don't know who John Rose is. I had to check out his material, but I've, I've told you guys again and again and again and again, why I don't support fully raw diets. There is enough literature to show that cooking a good number of foods, especially in the vegetable world, actually increases their nutrient content or enhances their, their, their um, bioavailability, their, their, their absorbability of their nutrient content. For instance, hooking tomatoes increases and enhances the absorption of lycopene, 
which is really good for uh, prostate, for the prostate in men. Uh, and it also can cook out toxins in other foods. For instance, uh, like the goitrogens in soy products, the goitrogens that are in broccoli can be cooked out. Um, or the toxins, like the poisons that actually exist in, in mushrooms. There, believe it or not, there are, there are actually poisons in mushrooms that can be cooked out. Um, now, small amounts, when people eat raw mushrooms, aren't going to hurt themselves necessarily. But, I mean, maybe a child or a, somebody of se a senior citizen or something might be more affected by it, or somebody who has an ill, a weakened immune system as it is. But there are some toxins in mushrooms. There are things that can be cooked out. There are benefits to cooking. And we've been cooking for so long that our bodies have evolved to do well with cooking. So that's my stance on that. So I always advocate a mixed diet. There are foods that should be eaten raw and are better raw or just great raw, like fruits, like even some nuts and seeds. And there are foods that are just better cooked, that are healthier cooked, that are more health promoting when cooked. So a mixed diet is what I I. I, I promote and I don't I, so therefore if this John Rose guy is is like a um, complete and utter raw foodie I, I naturally am not going to agree with him and I'll have and I have plenty of research and I've covered the research in the past in previous videos on raw food and why I don't agree with raw food diets um, let's see here there's people going having a, a fight in here it's like come on guys it's the holidays Let's, let's, let's try to act like we're, oh, oh wow. Um, uh, I'm trying to, his scrolling went by so fast. Hmm. Hell, Corey, I'm being sick like every two months in the winter. What can I do with it? It's extremely depressing and stopping my gym progress, so I really need to sort it out. How are your vitamin D levels? I actually did a video recently about how vitamin D can actually cut your risk of the flu and the common cold actually also reduce the, um, uh, I guess, well, well, my, my words are escaping me right now, but the um, contagiousness of a flu or a cold that you might get as well, and lessen the severity. So uh, check that video out, but I did a video recently on if your vitamin D is low, which is common in the winter months, um, that could be a culprit. Uh, how's your sleep? How's your stress level? Um, how, how are, how, have you had blood work done recently? Uh, how are your vitamin and mineral profiles in general? You really should speak to your doctor about that. If you're getting sick that often, it sounds to me like there's something missing, something wrong, and you should address that. Uh, let's see here. Norton says, five minutes in and already the chat room is cancer. Yeah, unfortunately, that's how things like, uh, like YouTube can get. Uh, does bromelain have a significant value as a bodybuilder and which foods are highest in it? Actually, yes, bromelain has a significant value to athletes in general, especially in periods of high overtraining risk, like when you're overreaching, for instance. Bromelain has been shown to maintain testosterone levels. Uh, I didn't say increase testosterone levels. I say maintain your healthy, normal values when you're going through a period of overtraining. And as any, and as elite athletes often do, and as even some, you know, everyday gym athletes can do as well use using overreaching is something that can be beneficial to you for short periods of time which is where you intentionally overtrain for a short period of time to elicit a result and this is where something like bromelain and where supplements like um, ashwagandha um, and other stress fighters and things that can help reduce cortisol levels really come in handy in those periods because they can significantly reduce the negative effects of short-term overtraining which can have a positive effect in your results. Somebody wants me to ban this guy, so boom. Uh, Cub Nier's gone. He's out of the chat. I'm the only mod here right now, so. <laughs> um, it's 250 micrograms a day for DHEA. Uh, that, that sounds about right. Um, I took about 600 milligrams in my, uh, in, my, in my pill that I have, so it's more than enough. Um, my objective now is focusing on consistency and building muscle while getting strong, kind of a beginner. For someone that can work out four days a week, how much volume should I do, number of exercises? That really depends on your recovery abilities. If you're truly a beginner, then you might want to stick to 20 sets and under, working sets that is, 
per session, maybe no higher than 24. It really depends. Listen to your body. Listen to how your body responds because some people can do fuck loads of sets and they just are able to recover easily from it. Others, they can't even do a quarter of what somebody else can do. I mean, I know folks who have my level of experience, like 35 to 40 uh, working sets per session. And me, I, I, I keep it to 27 to 30 tops. Otherwise, I begin to feel the effects on my recovery ability, unless I'm like doing an intentional overtrading period. Um, and I'll only do that for like two to four weeks. So uh, listen to your body. I can't really give you a definitive answer to that. Maybe try like 15 to 20 working sets. See how you go with that. Uh, and then work your way up to 24. See if that works. And if you're still finding you have a lot of recovery ability at four days a week, because your frequency is important too, um, then maybe bump it up to, to up between 25 and 30 and see how you go there. Listen to your body. See how it responds. If you feel that it's becoming too much, pull back immediately. Don't wait until you go into overtraining. Um, what are your thoughts on spirulina? Um, I've heard that it's a good source of B12, but then again, I've heard from others that it's not an active source of B12. I know it's very high in protein, but I've also heard it tastes like total and utter shit. So uh, I, I can't say that um, I have a lot of personal thoughts on spirulina because I haven't tried spirulina. Uh, can all can all of you guys with basic questions just Google Michael Greger and your questions he answers most of the time like spirulina? Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, and did you check out the probiotic skincare company operated by Oxford Biologist Mother Dirt? Now, I've got to look into that. Sorry, I've had a really busy week. Um, it's only getting busier because, like I told you guys, I'm writing a book right now. So I'm in the process of getting that book together um, so I can get this thing out as soon as possible. I really wanted a deadline by the end of the year, but I don't know if that's going to happen right then and there or maybe within a week of the end of the year, but we'll see. But um, my arm book, the arm training book, um, which is going to be like the arm training Bible, because this is going to be a this is going to be the end all be all book for a natural to increase their arm size who's, who has lagging arms, that is, or anyone who just wants to put some more emphasis on their arms because you know, it is a showcase muscle. I'm working on that right now, so it's been really taking a lot of my time. Uh, Corey, what are your current lifts? Uh, let's see here. Um, bench is like 225. Deadlift, uh, which I haven't done for a while because I've moved on the stiff leg and rack pulls for a bit. Uh, I like to interchange my exercises. Even my bench that I've moved on to like dumbbell bench press, incline bench presses right now. I'm using that at the moment. So I've dropped the barbell for a bit of time because I'm, I like to cycle my lifts. I'm a bodybuilder, not a power lifter. But my, my deadlift was like around 400. Um, and again, these are for, uh, all my everything I'm naming here is for like between six and eight reps, um, you know, for the most part. So we're looking at six to eight reps for most of these that I'm mentioning, um, maybe five lowest, but six to eight, eight on the first set at very least, uh, because I don't really max out. I'm not that kind of person who maxes out, you know, so those are some examples right there. Um, yeah, I don't really work on PRs because I'm not looking for I'm not a power lifter. Uh, when it comes to taxing my muscle fibers, the amount of sets that I would need to do to be able to elicit hypertrophy uh, at, let's, let's say, three, you know, if I was to do three set, three reps, per, sorry, per exercise, per, per set, I would need to do like seven or eight sets to be able to get enough cumulative volume from a particular exercise to be able to, you know, grow from it appropriately. I'm going by research. This is what I would need for the cumulative volume. Now, that being said, too, with the rest time that I'd require, which is between two to three minutes rest for the heavier sets, sometimes up to five minutes rest between sets, if I'm doing like eight sets, I mean, we're talking about close to 40 minutes on one fucking exercise when I have other exercises I've got to be doing. Keep in mind, I am a bodybuilder. I like to keep my rest up to two to three minutes tops. And even then, for most exercises, I'll only do like 30 to 60 seconds of rest, uh, depending on the rep scheme that I'm using. So... Um, I don't really focus on power training. Now, not to say I don't sometimes, like I might put some heavy days in where I might have like three exercises I'm doing that day, um, you know, like focusing on three core heavy moves, but I'll cycle that in every now and then. My real focus is my main rep ranges, typically speaking, are between six and 15. Um, I work within that range and I'll do drop sets, I'll do rest pause, I'll do, you know, force force reps, things like that at times as well. But I also don't overuse that because I can burn out. 
Let's see. Uh, how's that Kubnir guy still there? I, I thought I, you know what? He's blocked. Whatever. I can't. I can't really uh, do anything about it. You know, he's he's a twat. So, um, I started taking vitamin D like two weeks ago. Okay. You know, your levels might not have. have I don't. I really don't know. It might not. Maybe it's not on vitamin D. Yet. I don't. I don't know what. You might need to get your blood work. I'm not a doctor, so like this is that guy who was asking before how he's getting sick so often. I really don't know. I, I don't know what could be wrong with you. Um, what you could be missing. I would get your blood blood drawn by a doctor, have it analyzed, see if you have any deficiencies uh, or have some kind of maybe a medical condition that you're not aware of otherwise, um, and, and, and see if that, or it could just be that you simply have been training, maybe you've been training a lot and your immune system is weakened from the training, from, the, from, uh, from training too much, and whenever somebody is sick around you, you just, you just get it. I, I, I don't know. Some people do tend to get sick more than others because their immune system just isn't as strong as others. I mean, but I would check with your doctor. I'm not a doctor. I really don't know what to venture a guess on this. Um, vitamin D, which is the first thing that I jumped to concerning the research I had recently read about how during the winter, it is a common deficiency and vitamin D deficiency is linked to uh, weakened immunity. Uh, this might be an untasteful question, but is scat considered vegan if your sex partner is an omnivore vegetarian? Okay, that was a stupid joke. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you're saying it's a joke. I was, I was about to say it's kind of a, a troll question, but uh, um, my, as I said before, to troll with troll questions, when it comes to bodily fluids, if somebody is, I guess, like, for instance, like if, you know, I don't know, eating a girl out, for instance, and she comes in your mouth, like, or you come, or, you know, a girl eats a guy's cum and she's a vegan, you know, it was given willingly, you know, so, you know, there you go. It's technically vegan. Corey, did you ever do shrooms, says this troll. I've said before many times, I don't do any drugs, buddy. Let's see here. Uh, people are talking amongst themselves, so I'm not really sure uh, what's what's up with some of these. Uh, what's going on? There's a lot of conversations going on amongst themselves. Um, does being an overweight, being an overnight schedule affect fitness? Um, your body will adapt. I mean, there are people who have great bodies who work as EMTs, for instance, and work night shifts and have to sleep, you know, during the day and then get their training in wherever they can. So there are people who make that that sort of lifestyle work. Your body will adapt. What will throw things off is that if you have a fluctuating schedule, which means that Sometimes you work night shifts, sometimes you work day shifts, and it all happens within a span of weeks, you know, where you're just constantly shifting and throwing your body, you know, uh, a curveball, basically, because that will affect your cortisol levels, and it will affect, you naturally, your hormone levels, you, and, like your testosterone will drop, your estrogen will rise, you'll be more prone to put on body fat, you won't be as strong in the gym, um, you may have trouble sleeping, which will affect your lifts, which will affect your recovery, so you've got to find some consistency. So if you are a person who is a night worker or you're a person who's a day worker, try to remain consistently on one of those schedules for a period of time. And if you ever have to go back to a different schedule, like if your life just changes, you're going to have to ease into that new schedule and then remain consistently on that. See what I'm saying? Uh, what's the supplement and herb you said that gave you really deep sleep? It's not an herb. It's actually GABA uh, and glycine. So GABA, which is gamma amino butyric acid, uh, it does make me feel more relaxed. Now it doesn't really, it doesn't knock me out. It's not like it's not a, it's not that sort of a, of a compound. Um, but it, it, it sort of relaxes me. It, it, it promotes sleep. And then when I fall asleep, it does promote the release of GH, which can affect deeper dreaming. Uh, sorry, deeper sleep and better dreaming. Uh, and the same thing with uh, glycine, which is an amino acid, the principal one found in sugar. Actually. Um, Glycine actually also helps promote deeper sleep. Now, again, it doesn't knock you out, but glycine will help calm you, relax you, and then when you're asleep, you'll experience deeper sleep with better dreams. Not necessarily nice dreams, like you can get deeper sleep and vivid nightmares, but you will dream, you will get a deep sleep.
If you could pick two martial arts, which would I choose? Well, naturally, I'm going to go with karate for one of them. I love karate. I've been in karate since I was eight years old. I've studied two forms of karate, um, one of them being a full contact form because I wanted to fight and knock down tournaments. Uh, but it would be, I would say, karate of some sort, whether it be Kyokushin or Enshin or Ashihara or, you know, Daidojuku, which is not really fair because Daidojuku is Kyokushin karate mixed with judo. Um, so it's like a mixed martial art of Japanese styles. But if I, and then I would, I would say mix that either with, I don't know, jujitsu or judo or wrestling or something. But I would pick one grappling form, and but my striking form would be karate, straight up. I, it is just my reflex. I'm not saying it's the best art for everyone. I'm not saying it's the best art, period. I'm just saying that karate is, to me, my preferred striking form. Uh, but there are plenty to choose from. You know, you got Muay Thai, you have Taekwondo, and there are some legit hardcore Taekwondo schools, believe it or not. Uh, you got Sancho, you know, and, and, or Chinese kickboxing. You have, there are full contact uh, forms of Chinese arts as well. Um, really, when it comes down to it, I hate when people bad mouth the TMAs because the, the traditional martial arts, that is, because, you know, there, there are good schools. It's all about how it's taught and the application. The problem that you run into is you have a lot of these bullshit mick dojos, as they're referred to, that are not really anything better than a daycare center for children. Uh, and, and they don't really, they may teach technique, but they don't really teach how to apply it or they do unrealistic things with teaching how to apply it. Um, they, don't, they don't do bag training. They don't do pad training. They don't do partner sparring. And I mean full contact, knockdown partner sparring. There are no full contact tournaments. You have to be able to go up against resisting opponents. That's how you learn how to apply your art. You, got, you learn the technique. You learn the kata, which in my opinion is part of learning the technique. You learn to apply it to bags and pads, and you learn to apply it into a resisting opponent. So if you can get all those elements in a school, it doesn't matter if it's goju, ru karate, shotokan karate, or if it's a wushu, or if it's taekwondo, it's going to be, you're going to benefit from it. You're going to benefit, your training will benefit, and the results and your effectiveness will benefit from it. And, um, but yeah, for me, it would be karate would be one of them, you know, I would probably say Kyokushin because it's what I'm familiar with, uh, or even Okinawan because I'm familiar with that too. Uh, or, you know, and, and also, like I said, jujitsu, maybe judo, or even wrestling of some kind. It's hard for me to pick there because they're all pretty good, you know, they're all really good forms of, uh, you know, of like throws grappling, things like that. They all have all that in, in, included in them. So, But popularly speaking, I guess jiu-jitsu or Brazilian jiu-jitsu are probably the most popular um, or popularly sought after for the MMA. Um, somebody says, they're surprised that Charlie Greaser isn't here yet. I I don't know. Like It's Christmas. Like I'm surprised anyone's even really here. Um, well, bench pressing, my left arm always flares out a bit, which leads to a higher load of pressure on my right scapula. Anything I do against, I can do against that. Is there a reason why your left arm is flaring out? Uh, do you have a weakness on that particular side? Do you, uh, you got to watch your form. You might have to lower the weight down and start from scratch and really pay attention to your form and then work yourself up from there again. Sometimes if you find that you're doing an exercise, you've got up to a certain weight, but your form is just absolute shit at that weight, You've got to bite the ego and you've got to pull back the weight and try to work back up again with better form. Don't let bad form, you know, don't go for a heavier weight and sacrifice your form because of it. That's what I'm trying to say, because that can lead to injury. Is it true that you get the best and deepest sleep between 12 and 2 p.m.? I hear different things all the time. I hear that starting at 10 p.m., you get um, even better and deeper sleep. I, I, I don't know. I get deep sleep sleeping like when I can get to bed, which is usually around the same time every night, around midnight-ish, and then sleeping for about eight hours, you know, six to eight hours. Uh, I, I can sleep just fine like that. So um, really, I think it's more about consistency and getting your body into a groove more so than a specific time, time frame. Okay. First of all, Corey... Hi, is there a best time to train? Because I was used to training in the morning and had awesome workouts, but recently my workouts were pretty okay. Maybe I'm not used to it anymore. There was actually a study recently. Um, this is really interesting. A study that showed that people who self-identify as night people train better in the evening. 
it sounds kind of like, you know, well, no shit. And people who identify as morning people train better in the morning. But oddly, people who don't know which one they are train better in the evening. So I would say, you know, if you found mornings are better for you, then perhaps mornings are just better for you. But if your schedule is only allowing you to train the evening, work with what you've got, make the best of what you've got. At least you're taking care of yourself, you know? Do what you can do. Even if, but, but where you can get a morning workout, if you prefer a morning workout, like maybe on a weekend or something, get one. Grab one where you can. Like, I prefer evening workouts myself, which is great, for my schedule at least. But on, but on like the weekends, on Saturdays, I'll do a morning workout because it just fits my schedule also. And I will say that my evening workouts are better. But you know what? I, I, that morning workout doesn't really negatively affect me. I just get it in because, again, it affects my schedule because Saturdays are so jam-packed. So work with what you what – you, we're not all blessed to be able to do whatever we want all the time. So a lot of us are working, working people, you know? Let's see here. Uh, make sure I'm not missing any questions here. Hammering Hank asks if Kata is overrated. It seems pointless to me. It's just a lowly, uh, just a lowly white belt. Um, there, you, you call yourself a lowly white belt, but let me tell you something my sensei put to me one time. To the average person on the street who trains in nothing, most people don't train in anything, a white belt is still more advanced than them. You'd have a better chance, you know, at that point in time, you know, of dealing with your average man in the street who isn't trained, even as a white belt. But Kata are not pointless. Kata basically are theory. You're seeing, you're seeing the techniques put into movement, into motion, into fluidity. It's it's, it's essentially theory. It, you know, I, I heard one person one time say to me that kata is basically a way to see how, you know, you know, let's say you're fighting seven people, how you fight seven people. It's like theoretically, yeah, if people are perfectly lined up in specific spots, but that's not really the purpose of kata. Kata is theory of, of technique, in my opinion. It's application of technique. It's fluid movement. It teaches you fluid movement. It teaches you stance within movement, it, footwork within movement, um, technique within movement. It, it's very important to learning to move your entire body as a whole. Remember, your body is not just upper body, lower body, arms, and legs. Your body is a whole entity. And when you kick and punch, it comes from the core. Those techniques come from the core. You move your body as a whole. Even when you punch, your feet are involved. Your footwork is important. It's, it's, it, you know, you have to learn to move as one, your body as one, and not as separate sections. You know, a lot of times uh, I've watched street fights that are really hilarious. Street fights are so funny. Uh, where a bunch of untrained people are basically, to my eyes, it looks like they're just kind of slapping on each other. And their bodies are just so... They're not just they're not moving with any rhyme nor reason. It's just I don't know. It comes across as very humorous to me. But then again, that's with my trained eyes. But anyone who takes the martial art for a while is going to see that, and they're probably going to find your average untrained street fight to be kind of hilarious. <laughs> kind of hilarious. It's almost like a comedy to watch. You know, it's such a joke because they 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 really do. They slap. They they muscle everything. Every punch, every kick is muscled. And uh, you, you shouldn't be doing that. You're, you, you should be using your body's power, your full body's momentum and power, your core in your, in your strikes, not just your arm muscles, or your leg muscles, or, your, your, or, or whatever. You know, you, you're using so much more that your whole body is involved. I'm trying to summarize it as, as for, to make it as easy to understand as possible. That's basically what I'm trying to do here. Um, anyway... Uh, Shotokan karate is awesome, and Shotokan karate is one half of what it, what is makes up uh, Kyokushin. Kyokushin is a combination of Shotokan and Goju Ru, as well as some Western uh, boxing styles and some kickboxing as well as worked in there too. It's sort of a, a mix of styles because Masuyama wanted to create a combat form of karate that could stand on its own and compete with Muay Thai, and he successfully did, and he proved it to work. So. Um, uh, you know, but Shotokan is, is badass. And, uh, you know, uh, Lyoto, for instance, in uh, the UFC is a Shotokan practitioner. Um, let's see here. Thoughts on 50 grams of fructose being the limits before it's toxic? Does Jason Blaha says this all the time? Um, I, I, I don't think fructose is necessarily toxic, but, you know, 
you want to, you don't want to get it from like uh, processed sources, for instance, like your candies and whatnot. If you're going to obtain fructose, get it from a whole food source where you're getting all the peripheral vitamins, nutrients, and enzymes and whatnot, like from fruit, for instance. Don't be getting it from like gummy candy or something, you know, or, or whatever. Uh, a high fructose corn syrup drink or something, you know. Uh, that, that's my recommendation. Get them all. Um, let's see here. Uh, people are talking about being drunk right now. Well, it is Christmas, although I don't agree with alcohol, but yeah, I, I don't I don't particularly agree with many things that Jason Baja says either. Uh, somebody's saying he's a hack. Um, so I, somebody asked me what my thoughts are on Tai Jaquan. Oh, like like Tai Chi? Tai Chi was a very valid martial art at one time. It, it was a self-defense. It was a brutal martial art at one time. At one time. I have to emphasize that at one time. Uh, what you see a lot of people practicing of Tai Chi today. Now, granted, a lot of my knowledge in the martial arts comes from the Japanese world. I study exclusively Japanese martial arts. I have not studied, at least under any formal instruction, Chinese martial arts, for instance. So, um, and I, I did like a week of Muay Thai, but it wasn't for me. I, I went I went into full contact karate after that because um, I was had to, I had to unlearn too many chamberings and techniques that I had learned from my years in karate prior to going into Muay Thai. But um, uh, it was a brutal style at one time, but now it's become like almost like this uh, relaxing yoga sort of exercise or a meditative sort of thing. It's 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 a it's a far cry. It's not even a shadow of what it was at one time. Now, I don't know if there are still places that teach proper defensive Tai Chi. But as if I'm not mistaken, Tai Chi, its original form, was in a lot of respects similar to Aikido. There was a lot of um, pushing and pulling and small joint manipulation and uh, using someone else's attack force against them. Uh, things like that. But then again, like I said, I'm not, I'm not well versed in the Chinese martial arts, so I could be wrong about that. But that's what I gather about Tai Chi, what its original use was for. What music do I play on guitar? Uh, it varies. Anything from classic rock to folk music to, uh, uh, you know, traditional pieces as well. Um, like, you know, I do Simon and Garfunkel. I also do metal. I, I, a lot of like, progressive music. I mean, anything I really feel like playing, I can pretty much play on guitar. Um, uh, my styling is more like blues. Like it's, I guess it's more blues influence, like David Gilmore of Pink Floyd. That's really what I, I grew up learning from. Like that, I wanted to be like David Gilmore at one time. That's the style I really learned from, listening to Gilmore. Um, Steve Hackett from Genesis, for instance. Guys like that really influenced my... Uh, my playing a lot more. Gary Moore, the British guitar player who's now deceased. These are all guys who really influenced my playing a lot more than like say Steve Vai or Satriani. Now, I'm not a shredder. I'm, I'm more of a, you know, an expressive player, I guess is the better word for it, which is very blues. Um, somebody says, as a vivid martial arts uh, practic practitioner, you need to play the Shenmue series um, I, I don't really play a lot of games, but I, I'll look, I'll look, I'll look at it. Uh, but I don't really have a lot of time for games. Uh, what games I have played, I guess would be like the Elder Scrolls, Mortal Kombat. Um, but I got a bit of Mortal Kombat fan since like the early nineties. So, um, do I drink alcohol? No, I consider alcohol like a drug and I don't even take like Tylenol or Advil unless I absolutely need it. Like where I'm at a point where my brain feels like it's going to burst in my skull if I don't take it, like I'm sick or something and I can't sleep without it. But I try to avoid all drugs unless medically necessary. And um, so I don't drink alcohol. I don't smoke. I don't use any any like herbal drugs like marijuana or, or mushrooms. Um, none of that. I guess the only drug you could say I regularly take, and this is only a technicality, would be caffeine because I get it in coffee. Um Come on, man, what's wrong with a little booze? I just don't use it because it can affect protein synthesis even one time. It can affect testosterone. It can affect negative. It can increase your cortisol, which means increase your estrogen, lower your testosterone. I don't see any value in alcohol. I mean, I don't want to be impaired either. So um, 
I like to have my wits about me. I like to know what's going on in my surroundings. I like to know who is in my surroundings, if there's any threats in my surroundings at all times. I like to be aware. Um, I, that's why I don't do alcohol. Uh, big forearms make a physique way better. Agree or disagree? It depends. If you have really big forearms, but you're but you're like maybe your upper arms are lagging in comparison, or aren't or as or are as big as your forearms, that can look a little strange. Um, it's all about balance and symmetry. When it comes to a physique, it's about the whole package. It's about balance and symmetry and flow. And if you have a weak area, you want to bring that up. But if you have another dominant area, you want to kind of push back a bit on that while pulling forward on something else and bringing something else up. Like for instance, whenever I want to bring my arms and my delts up because they're, in my opinion, my weakest body parts. I will pull back on back and chest training because they're stronger body parts to work on hammering my delts and my arms. In fact, I'll increase their frequency to double, if not triple as much as my back and chest uh, just to ensure they get more love and attention, basically, um, to help them to facilitate growth. So. It really, it really, it really depends. Like big forearms can look great if it's all in symmetry. Big forearms are great for fighting. <laughs> you know, they're really good for like you're for throwing strong punches. If you have strong forearms and strong grip, you're you can be a great fighter. Let's see here. Is beta alanine worth it? Not very Christmassy, but a. Hey. Uh, beta alanine is has been shown in research to work synergistically with creatine in improving body composition um, as well as improving strength. Uh, on, and that's better than beta alanine on its own, or beta alanine, or or no beta alanine, and uh, or basically, creatine and beta alanine are better than beta alanine on its own, or creatine on its own, or neither. So uh, if you're going to take beta alanine, I would take it with creatine. If you're taking creatine, it might be worth trying beta alanine to see how it goes for you. Um, you can find it relatively affordable, and uh, Carnison, which is the trademark name, kind of like Creapure is a trademark for creatine, is vegan. So that hope that helps you if you're looking for it. Look for uh, I think it's I think it's called Carnison. Uh, Carno C A R N O C A R N O S Y N. I think it's how it's spelled. The S Y N is at the end of it. That's the trademark name. How much water do I drink a day? I drink a lot of water. Like I'll, I will sip water between meals. At every meal, I'll have like 16 ounces. Around my workout, I'll have like, I'll have like 32 ounces of, of water, um, maybe more, sometimes even more than that. Uh, definitely 16 before, definitely 16 after. And sometimes I'll sip through about 16, eight to 16 during the workout as well. Um, and then like with meals, like I said, 16 per meal. Uh, I also drink and sip water throughout the day. I, I'm always staying hydrated. I don't wait until I feel thirsty. In fact, right now, I got a big freaking mug of water to go with this Q&A. So I'm always drinking water. Um, oh, boy. The uh, Jerry Ward Winstraw Cavs guy is back. This guy keeps changing his name all the time. Um, I thought punching power came from the legs and back more than the arms. It does, but if you have strong forearms, under, okay, there's so many mechanics behind a punch. When you throw a punch, it comes from, it's going to fly out. It's going to propel from your rear delts. It's going to throw out from the back. Um, of course, the twisting of your hips, your core, it's all involved, but it's going to launch from, it's almost like, imagine there's like a spring attached to your, your rear delts, well, with your rear delts, it sort of launches out from that. And when the punch comes out at the end, what I do is my hands are never soft. But at the moment of impact, I, I actually will tighten even harder. And it's like, it adds like a crushing element to a punch. So when I punch, I actually intentionally clench the forearm at the moment of impact. I'll, I'll drive power into that punch at the moment of impact. It's hard to explain. There's so many mechanics to it that you really want to get some formal training. Like if you want to learn to punch better, take up boxing or take up karate or take up Muay Thai, take up some striking art. If you want to learn to be better at kicking, you know, take up karate, take up Muay Thai, take up Taekwondo. These are things that can teach you the mechanics behind these techniques and how to really make them powerful and useful. I mean, one of the things I, I, I always pick on when I watch UFC fights is um, I'm not saying all the time, because there are some great, strikers out there 
But there are a lot of guys, I'll watch them kick, and it's almost like they're kicking the check. They're kicking a tap. When I kick, I kick to cut through a person. I kick to destroy. I kick so that is the that will end the fight. I don't kick to like just hit somebody a little bit. I kick to devastate. That's how karate kicks. That's how Muay Thai kicks. We kick to devastate, to destroy, to cut something down. When we kick, we kick through a person. You know, we don't just kick and retract. We try to kick through a person with a roundhouse kick. So we want to go through the person, you know, so to speak. It's, we, we visualize that. You want to, like, devastate with your attacks. You don't want to just tap somebody, you know. But then again, maybe that's more of a traditional martial artist view because we're looking more for self-defense and to defend ourselves in life and death situations. It's not really all about sport. It didn't begin as a sport mentality. So we're looking for the quickest way possible to destroy something that is threatening our lives or somebody else's life. That's, the, that's where martial arts really got its root. And it was used to protect people of power, protect themselves, protect people of lower class. Like, for instance, the Okinawans trained themselves to defend against the samurai, to give you an example historically. So um, this whole sport aspect of it really is more of a modern thing. And that's why there are a lot of techniques that just don't apply in, the, in like the MMA or in the UFC because they're illegal techniques. You know, there are a lot of vitally deadly strikes that are taught in traditional martial arts that are not allowed in UFC, which is a sport, a sport organization. Um, Somebody says, I know this isn't a political channel, but I can't resist to put this, questions, this kind of questions out there. Do you follow any political news sites, video creators, etc.? cetera? Um, I, I do watch Paul Joseph Watson um, when, I, when I have some time to watch Joseph Watson. I, I like reading Vox Day's work. Like He did a book called Social Justice Warriors Always Lie. My God, it's, it, you got to read it. It's a good book. Um, his material is great. Um, uh, but when it comes to news, I don't really trust a lot of news sites. When the elections were going on, I was mostly looking to WikiLeaks and listening to what people were saying and interpreting myself. So I would listen to things that Hillary was saying, listen to things that Trump was saying, and I would do fact checking and research and I would come to my own conclusions. I would not listen to something that Fox put in a headline or CNN put in a headline because I don't trust mainstream media, to be perfectly honest with you. You know, even the conservative mainstream media is oftentimes not really it's not telling the truth either. So um, it, it's hard for me to say like what news outlet I would say I go with, but I do like watching Paul Joseph Watson. He makes some good points. Um, I feel like an outcast since the stream has become an MMA stream. Uh, uh, free animals. We, we kind of talk about everything since I do martial arts. It does come up. People ask me questions about the martial arts, but um, you know, I, I do think that learning to defend yourself is is a very valuable thing for anybody anybody to, to put in their arsenal whether you compete or not but it's great to to, to build your body build your strength learn to defend yourself and, and just grow as a person i think in general these are all important things you can do for yourself because you never know what life is going to throw at you um let's see here i took the l-carnitine as i was interested in the serotonin increasing effect um, okay, uh, okay, I, I don't know much. Okay, that's, that's great. I, I mean, L-carnitine's got so many benefits you could use it for. Uh, some are very specific, like L-carnitine can, uh, can improve uh, insulin sensitivity. L-carnitine can help dispose of uh, excess glucose, especially if you're ketogenic, that can really be helpful. And L-carnitine has been shown to um, increase energy levels when you have a high-fat diet. L-carnitine has also been shown to, uh, uh, what was the other thing that, that recently I was reading about? Oh, it can improve it can improve uh, androgen receptor sites on your muscles so if you are going through a period of really high training really like like overreaching for instance it can be good for that too because as your anabolic hormones might increase you'll have more receptor sites to um to allow them to uh to take to latch on to uh and also can it also can reduce fatigue it's been shown to reduce fatigue which is great for overtraining periods also um but you know a lot of these supplements are very specific so it's like if you're not really falling into one of these specific needs, the stuff that may not really benefit you and you would waste your money. Uh, everyone, if, hammering Hank, I'm not gonna talk about Harambe. I mean, what's my opinion on Harambe? This is so old, but my opinion on Harambe, let's put it this way, is that people need to be better fucking parents. You know, 
Your kids shouldn't end up in a goddamn gorilla enclosure. Be a better fucking parent. Or don't be a parent. Uh, Tyler Cooper says, would you spar with me? Sure. I mean, if you're ever in, in the area. Um, I, I actually told... Last Q&A, somebody said, um, would I fight the golden one? Like, spar with the golden one. I actually reached out to Marcus on Facebook and told him about that. And said that, hey, if I'm ever in Sweden, which I don't know when it's going to ever happen, but if he's ever in the UK and I am as well, or if he's in New York, I would love to do a sparring session and we would record it and put it up online. Me and the Golden One would have a sparring session. I would love to do that. It would be awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I, I don't mind. I, I, I've sparred with so many different people from so many different arts. I don't mind. Uh -oh. <laughs> Does the dick hang lower than the balls? I don't know. Ask Rich Piana. Um, El Carnitine fucked up my short-term memory. I have a comment about it before the one you read. It was pretty noticeable effect. Uh, fucked up your short-term memory. Oh, that's, I never heard of that happening before, but um, are you sure it was the Carnitine? I guess it was the only thing you changed. It might be. Maybe I, I, I haven't read anything about that before, but it doesn't mean maybe you didn't have a negative effect to it. Um. Are simple carbs post-workout beneficial? I've heard it can stunt – yes, it can stunt growth hormone. Um, too many simple carbs as well, like, uh, for instance, too much dextrose or pure glucose at, like, 75-gram load or higher can reduce testosterone for up to two hours, significantly, that is. Um, and there's also been research to show that you don't necessarily need carbs post-training to ignite protein synthesis. The leucine that's in, for instance – soy protein powder is going to help spike insulin to a degree as well without the introduction of carbs. So you can actually build muscle on a keto diet. Research has shown that too. Um, the only thing that's a downside is that, and this is why I've said before that I believe that you should include carbs in your diet if you're bulking and not use something like keto, is because being too low carb for too long can increase cortisol levels. Uh, that is a problem because increased cortisol means decreased testosterone, and increased estrogen. So I advise bulking on a, uh, on, on, a, on a diet that includes carbs. And when you're using ketogenic cut, I, this is why I institute things like carb refeeds because you're, too prolonged a period will affect your cortisol levels. So carbs do have their place, but they're not necessary for muscle growth, but they have their place and can negatively impact training results time without them have i ever been to sweden no i have not um it's one of the places i have not been i would i would like to see parts of scandinavia but never been no uh would you train with nerve damage what are your thoughts about nerve damage i actually have nerve damage um one of my uh one of my fingers uh has had a nerve i had an i went to art school so i have i have a uh, I, I had an accident where an exacto blade went into my, I was working late, I wasn't paying attention, I wasn't being careful, and one of two times I injured myself with an exacto blade, which is like a surgical blade, I jammed it into my forearm, uh, right into the into the wrist area, and I felt what felt like a blast of electricity up through my arm into my thumb. My thumb has never been the same since that. Uh, to this day, it's, it always feels like it's slightly asleep. Of this this finger it'll always be like that there's nothing i can do about it um there was nothing the doctors could do about it it's better than it was when it first happened but i have permanent nerve damage there uh but <laughs> on the flip side it hasn't affected my fighting it actually made my guitar playing better surprisingly enough because you know you have to be more fluid and soft and smooth when you play you have you, you can't be tight and rigid so it actually opened up my playing more in my fretting hands um, than what it was before that. So, you know, I look at it this way, like it was a bad thing. It was painful as fuck. I wish it never happened. But at the same time, there has been some blessings that have come from it as well, I guess, you know, and, uh, you know, things happen, accidents happen. Hey, at least I'm not one of those guys that sold off a limb or sold off digits of my fingers in a wood shop class. So that, that happened too. It happened in my high school. Let's see here. Um, my, my, my feelings of reverse pyramid training, you mean like, for instance, starting out with a really, really, really heavy set and then working up to a lighter set? I actually prefer that. I, I find that if I go too light first, um, for too many sets at least, 
and then do like, for instance, let's say I'm, I'm going to do five sets of an exercise and maybe I'll start with like 15 to 20 and then I'll do like 13, you know, 13 to 15 and like nine to 12 and work my way down to like five reps or something. I'll find that by the time I get to my five rep set, no matter how much rest I put in, I don't have the power, the strength, to be able to knock out and get the most out of that heavy set. So I do like pyramid training in the sense of getting my heavy work out of the way, the reverse pyramid training that is, getting the heavy work out of the way in the first set and then decreasing the weight and increasing the reps in the subsequent sets. Um, yes, I, I'm an artist. I, I have, uh, I, I've been doing, I, I mean, I've been drawing since I was, I, I'm very good in the arts, like whether it be the visual arts, the graphic arts, or it be music, or it be the martial arts. Um, I'm probably good at dancing, but I've never really tried dancing too much. Uh, um, just never got into it. Being that I can do martial arts, I probably can dance, um, but I've never tried. Uh, but yeah, the arts, the arts run in my family. Uh, writing, it all runs in my family. Um, <laughs> what types of guitars do I have? I have a couple acoustics. I have I have two Yamaha acoustics. One's a giant dreadnought guitar. I also have a uh, a semi hollow. It's like a, a thin a thinner acoustic with um. It's hollow, but it's kind of like it's got a semi hollow kind of feel about it. it it's an acoustic electric. I have a ES three thirty five Gibson. I have a Les Paul. I have a Stratocaster Fender Stratocaster that was customized to play like David Gilmour, Pink Floyd's. Um, all the same pickups, uh, same pickguard, same color, same everything. Um, short and tremolo arm. Uh, I've got a few metal guitars. Um, the Ibanez, Ibanez metal guitars, S style body, so a Strat style body, but you know the pickup configuration is more more conducive to metal. Um, those are some of the examples of the instruments that I have. Uh, I have Marshall amplification. I have um, amp modelers. Tons of Boss effects. I have a lot of shit. I've been playing. I've been playing guitar for so long that I have so much fucking equipment. So much fucking equipment. Um, love it. It's something that I love. It relaxes me. I play guitar every day because it relaxes me. Um, you be like training. Somebody says, "Do I train?" Wait, what the fuck? Somebody's like, "You be like training neck boy. Best best work your neck." I thought you was a karate. I, I do some neck training, but my neck also gets strong from like shrugs, from deadlifts, from, uh, you know, even my mid trap work. I get the full range, late range uh, lateral raises. I just don't consistently do neck training like directly with like the neck harness because you're not really supposed to do that all the time. You should cycle that kind of thing. There are people that can hurt themselves by doing neck training every session for months and weeks on end. Um, but yes, actually having a stronger neck will make it harder for you to be knocked out. It's true. It makes it harder to get the brain shake that will knock you out. I think the trolls are just here today because it's Christmas. They have nothing else to do, more so than usual. Um, uh, can we see your artwork anywhere? Uh, not, not online. I don't have any of it online. Uh, I actually have not engaged in visual arts in a long time uh i just you know except here or there i've done some like on the vegan muscle academy i did a little but i, I haven't really getting really put myself into it too much uh because i kind of burned out from it in the early 2000s from uh, from drawing i actually burned out in drawing um and my my love of music has remained so i still really engage in music all the time i'd like to get a channel started for music actually it's one of the things i want to do but, but time is such a constraint um but yeah, music is something I still do, but drawing, it's been so long since I've really sat down and created a, a nice big work of art, you know? Um, so I don't have anything online or a website displaying my work, but yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ, there's so many trolls right now. <laughs> anyway, um... Yeah, Eric says, make a video to want to play some guitar. I'd love to. Actually, I want to do a music channel. It's something I really want to do because I have a lot of original compositions. And I also want to do, um, uh, you know, I obviously have to do some covers because covers are what attract people to some of these music channels. And then they stay for, like, your original compositions. So it's a way to, like, kind of sort of transition people into hearing your work. They otherwise wouldn't have any reason to seek out or find because you're not famous or anything. Um Corey, have you ever heard of the band, uh, what the fuck, uh, thing moves so fast I couldn't see that, 
the band C-H-O-N. You would love their guitar work. I'll have to check it out. Uh, violin is awesome too. Yeah, yep. I actually uh, dated a violinist at one time. I dated a piano player as well. Uh, let's see here. Are you going to do a New Year's Q&A? Yeah, sure. I'll be here next Sunday. Every Sunday, I I'll try it out. I, I don't mind. I'll do a New Year's Q&A. Um, let's see here. Thoughts on the proper way to colon cleanse? Uh, there are colon like high fiber colon cleansing products you can buy. I've never had to use them. Um, maybe talk with your doctor about that. I don't know how much bro science there is to that. I a lot of these cleanse things to me are bullshit. Um, like like these detox drinks you can buy and just let your liver do its job. And if your liver is impaired, go to a doctor. You got a problem. But when it comes to cleansing your colon, it could be very well a real thing, you know. But you know the flush out your colon. There are people who do these high fiber like Metamucil drinks, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I've never done it myself. So anyway, um, it, the, the computer is telling me it's downtime at this point in time. It's going on for about an hour, and I got so much to do today. But thank you all for attending the Q&A. Thanks for coming out here on a Christmas. Uh, I didn't expect to see anyone really. Um, so uh, you know, like usual, if you guys want to hit up my Patreon, I got the link down below if you appreciate what I'm doing here. Uh, even like a dollar a month would be something you could throw my way. Um, there's also the Vegan Muscle Academy if you want to get training services where you train with me. It's incredibly affordable. Um, and there's a free protein PDF down below too if you've not signed up. It'll get you on my mailing list also, which will get you up to date and all the updates that come uh, with the starting of Q&As, when there will be Q&As, if there's going to be a cancellation, things like that. That's all going to be on the mailing list. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next uh, Sunday for a New Year's Q&A. See you around.